Hey, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the split screen plugin that I showed how to make in one of my previous tutorials. And you can either make it yourself in Apple Motion, or there's a link to download it below. Basically, we're looking at creating a kind of perfect four up split screen, and we're going to do that with video and images. And there's a couple of differences in the way that we can work with those two different types of files, and also um, a couple of creative things we can do um, with the images when we want to make those split screens that will animate them as well. So the first thing we're going to do is jump into our videos. Um, it's kind of the simplest example and just show how we set this split screen up. So we're going to grab four videos and just drag them down to the timeline. And we'll just get them all visible. And I'm going to trim these all to the same length. So I'm going to use Alt and the right square bracket just to trim those down. And then we'll select all of these First of all, we'll drop the audio down. We don't need any audio from those. And then we'll come to our split screen plugin, which is across on the right hand side. And to initially set it up, we can just double click here and it will apply the split screen um, to all four of those layers. And then simply we can select each of those layers, come to our video options, I'll just put my playhead over these and change each one. So this is going to be on the top left. Okay, and top left is the default for all of these when you kind of load up the plugin to start with. We'll have one on the top right, and one on the bottom right, and one on the bottom left. And so the nice thing with this is it's super simple uh, to set up. If we do add other videos uh, kind of later on in the timeline, so let's grab a couple of other videos. And we'll actually, let's grab this one and we'll trim it down a little bit. So we'll add this little video in here and then we'll trim this one at the top down and we'll cut to this one up here. So when we're adding new videos and we want to kind of keep the position of this top left the same, we can copy that. So edit and copy, select the next clip and then edit paste attributes and now we can paste just that split screen effect onto the next clip and that will keep everything in the same spot and then we can do the same for this one so edit copy select this and then edit paste attributes and we can paste that split screen there so now you can see if we play this through we play through those four videos but then we have a cut on the bottom right and then on the top left um, so we can super easily kind of set that up for a couple or multiple clips um, in our edits. If you are going to set up layers, then I basically would suggest that you put these into a group. So if you do Command and G, that is going to group that layer together and means it moves on its own. It also means we can trim it down without leaving any gaps between those two clips as well. So for these two clips, we'll do Command and G to kind of group those together and that will kind of give us some nice fluidity when we move things around. So just zoomed in a little bit there so you can see we've got just under 10 seconds of those now six clips um, and we've got uh, the kind of perfect seamless aligning of those different images. Let's zoom out just a notch there. So now we'll come to our images um, and images are slightly different because they're all slightly different resolutions and different orientations. So some of this might apply if you're using portrait video as well. So we'll grab a few different clips down to our timeline here. And this has got the spatial conform turned off actually. We'll turn this on and then we'll grab a couple of other images from here. We'll grab this portrait one and we'll grab this nice long one as well. So you can see with each of these images, if we highlight it and tap the V key, it's going to disable it. So you can see we can kind of scroll through our different layers and each of them has this kind of letterboxing either at the top and bottom or the left and right. And that's one thing we want to get rid of before we create our split screen. So we're going to run through um, how to do that. So let's start at the bottom image. So this image, um, we are going to highlight it and we're going to come to our crop options here. And we're going to choose crop. And basically what that's going to do is allow us to reframe the image um, to that 16.9 format. And once we're happy with that, we can click done. And then once we've done that, we're going to right click on that and turn that into a new compound clip. Now we can go into this compound clip and modify the image and change the framing of that cropping later on. 
um, but for the moment we're just going to grab the split screen and drag it on there and you'll see now it fits perfectly up in the, the top left corner. So we'll go up to our next image and just tap the V key to enable it and then we're going to come to our cropping again and crop and we can frame this, click done, right click on this, create a new compound clip, hit enter and then we'll make a split screen so we'll drag that across and now we can make that one on the top right and you can see we're getting that nice kind of seamless positioning there. Now if you don't do the compound clip when you add the split screen on there you'll find it will do some strange things because it's expecting a 16 9 19 20 by 1080 image. So that's where when we turn it into a compound clip we fix it to the size of our edit here. So I'm going to crop this one and we'll choose crop and we're getting some fun around the edges there. Hopefully that won't stick. We'll press done. We'll now right click on that and make it a new compound clip. Click OK and then we'll apply the split screen and then change this to the bottom right. And then this last image um, that I've kind of deliberately chosen because it's this super wide format, we're going to do something a little bit different with. So with the top image, if we come to our crop options here and choose the Ken Burns effect, you can see we're going to get a start and an end um, to this image. So I'm just going to make this a little bit less of an animation here, but basically we're going to start on the right and we're going to move to the left. So we'll press done there once that's set up. So now we have a animation across that image and now if we right click and make that a new compound clip, click OK and then add the split screen and then we can make that one appear on the bottom left. So now you can see we've got that perfect four up split screen with those four images, uh, one with a little bit of animation in there, we could have added animation into all of them. The one thing to bear in mind here is that all my images are quite short here, so they're only four seconds and one frame long. So if you do want to make these images kind of longer on the timeline, now I can't do that once I've actually got them set up here without going into the compound clip. So I can double click on the compound clip, I can zoom out here by command and minus, and I can stretch this out, and that gives me that extra bit of footage to kind of roll into. So now you can see I've stretched that out so I can make it longer in the main timeline. So again with the other images if I double click here, zoom out a little, command and minus, then I can stretch this out, come back, and then now I can stretch that out to whatever I've stretched it out to in the compound clip. So if you're setting things up at the start and you want them to be longer, then just drag them down to the timeline and stretch out your clip before you do uh, the cropping that you want to do. So we'll turn crop on, we'll come to Ken Burns for this one. So we're going to start somewhere here and we're going to kind of zoom in on these two paddle boards, press done. And once we've added the Ken Burns effect there we need to remember to go to right click on it, change it into a compound clip and then once it's a compound clip we can add our split screen onto there and we'll make this one appear on the top right. So now you can see we're playing through and we've left one black space there but we can double click in here, zoom out a little and stretch this out and then we can stretch it out here and we can trim this one down so we've got these all the same length now. We'll play that through so you can see we get a nice little bit of animation there and then at the top right and there we go. So one thing to also mention is that these clips now that we've got them in that kind of top left, top right, bottom right and bottom left format it'll be easy to mix these in with the video so there's no reason why we shouldn't slide these in to those groups and have our video and images um, edited together. So, so if you have a montage of video and photos that you want to create then this is definitely a, a kind of quick and easy way to do it either with the four up video split screen or the nine up video split screen where we have three rows of three. So if we play this through now you can see we've got that nice mixture of and actually we had our videos and images in a slightly different order so I'm just going to have to go through these and change my 
image up here to top left. I went the opposite way for some reason. And then this one will be top right. And this one will be bottom right. And this one will be bottom right. So now that we fixed that, we can play this through. And you can see we get this nice mixture of the images and the video working together really well. So hopefully that's a useful overview of a couple of different ways in which we can use the split screen plugin. As I mentioned before, there's a link to the tutorial, how you can make this split screen plugin yourself. And there's also a link to where you can download it from my Gumroad site. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.